and we are back with Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. Oh, you really need to get rid of that. But first, Befouled Barrows. Come on. There we go. Oh, ooh. I was not expecting this. <laughs> okay. Iridescent streaks appear in the billowest violet sky above the deserted lands. The streaks are not like an ordinary Galorian rainbow. They look more like oil dropped in water. The, Swiss, the Switzerland haze in the sky seems to waver along with the streaks. Time and time again, one of the commander's party spots some movement out of the corner of their eye and reaches for their weapon, only to immediately realize they, are, they were mistaken. Oh, cool. Oh, and we're corrupted, so... It, the ground underfoot turns a muddy gray covered in the dense layer of ash expelled by geysers. Curious nature phenomena, curious natural phenomena not uncommon in these parts. In the distance, barrels can be seen, appearing only as a vague pile of rocks in the haze. The wind whips clouds of ash into the faces of the commander and her party. Along with the ash, the wind ushers in ragged gray clouds that shroud the sky. A giant cloud a giant eye of clown unblinkingly watches the commander and her party from above. One can only imagine how insignificant the creature struggling across the land was seen from such a height. In the break in the clouds, a white of the the white of the sky's eye pulses, ready to burst like a boil. The dark cloud of the pupil grows blacker still. The commander decides to. I honestly want to do. Oh, we do have an idiot right now. Study the shape. That's a guarantee. Mm. Try to recall any previous mentions of such phenomena. Obviously, Ninio. Obviously, Ninio. Oh. Road 18. Ninio recalls conversations with with seasoned crusaders. If a giant eye appears in the sky, you must run and not look back. According to witnesses, what follows such an omen is so horrific that it can rob a new comrade to the world wound of their sanity? Study the shape. Make for the burrows. Ah. <sighs> hmm. The only cover in the middle of the... Should we study the shape just to see if the clouds more close? Let's see. Why is it underlined? Study the shape. I originally observed that in this wind, in the ordinary f storm clouds cannot coalesce into a clear shape. The air throbs with peril. This is no mere storm. What's brewing is something wrought by the abyss and possibly only in the wound. I originally recalls conversations with semen crusaders. A vagina are... We, are, we knew that from Ninio. Made for the barrels. What is going on with that? Come on. Yay. Living creatures can be beaten, but one cannot conquer a force of nature. The commander decides to run for cover. The party manages to reach the barrels before the storm swells to its full force. Something suddenly drops from the sky, landing with a splat at the commander's feet in an overripe, like an overripe fruit. It is white about the size of a chestnut. In a dark circle, the longer the commander stares at it, the more it seems like something is staring back. The fruit looks disturbing like an eyeball. The whirlwind. The whirlwind of ash stops the party from looking up to see what is happening in the sky. Perhaps a carrion bird was transporting its already riding prize home. At least that's what all the companions are hoping as they cluster around the milky white eyeball. The second, a second eyeball lands nearby with an unpleasant squelch, leaving only a bloody splash on the ash-covered ground. Two eyeballs cannot be a coincidence. The looming rocky ledges, which give the barrel the appearance of a hill, looks like they came crashing down on the party's heads at any moment. 
It was like they could come crashing down on the party's heads at any moment. However, they do not offer protection from the storms. The horrific hell misses the party almost entirely, and eyeballs land around them in a wet cacophony. What is happening here? The land around the barrels look more like a dumping ground than a burial ground. The storms have bleached skulls and bones, rusted armor, and dented swords. This is a familiar sight. More surprising are the arms and legs of golem scattered around the waist. The once snarling faces of animals that now lack all resemblance to their living brethren. Things that look like horse carcasses but with broken mechanical legs. Everything is brown with dust and long forgotten. A battle was fought here once. Through the veil of ash, through the veil, veil of ash, the party struggles to find the entrance to the barrel. Hmm. Kinda wanna do the, let's see, do we wanna fill on the walls? Not really. Remember everything that is known about the architecture? Ooh. Sakurian burial mounds. I feel like all bricks should have advantage or something on this, or like a bonus. Focus on traits of. <sighs> this is guaranteed, but I really wanna do the architectural thing. Well, actually. Focus on the traces of the trace of magic. The Neo senses the traces of generations upon generations of Sokorians performing rituals between and inside the burial mounds to grant their ancestors peaceful slumber. The magical signature unerringly leads her to the entrance, and as darkened piece of the casting that covers that cover is crumbles. <laughs> Gas and that covers it crumbles under the slightest pressure. The mouth of the barrel is cool and smells of damp and dust. More of the ash lies underfoot, pressed into glossy, slippery crust. It is clear that the barrel has been constructed above a cave system. The deliberately carved out corridors stretching off into the barrel's depths leave room for natural passageways. The wind, wailing through the stalactites in the dark, carries a strange sound similar to a desperate human cry. Help me. Help me. The party strains to hear and decides to find out who the voice belongs to. Or maybe it's the shows who's the best for it. It's an underlined one. The longer Inkria listens, the more the voice changes. Once one moment it sounds like a desperate cry of a child, the next the piercing ragged stream of a woman. The next bird song, it cannot be ruled out that she is hearing only what she wants to hear. <sighs> Did you say curiosity killed the cat? And I feel like obviously it's a setup. But. Child, woman, bird song. It said it cannot be ruled out, not that it's guaranteed, so go towards the voice. So, Ingrid cannot ignore the cries for help. The party rushes towards the sound, frequently looking around for enemies and traps. A strange thing. The strong, the closer they get to the voice, the less distinct the police become, blurring into the grindy screeches of, rusty of a rusty mechanism. The only passage leading further into the barrels finishes into a dead end. The sp a spacious cave, its walls decorated in fr frescoes that have that have almost entirely faded over time. Before the companions have a chance to decide whether to look for a door or turn back, the cave floor, which seems solid with well trodden ash, vibrates and begins to rub and began to ripple like water. One after another, the commander and companions are sucked into the thick, ashy mass like they have stepped into quicksand. Hmm. I feel like we need to excess, honestly. Excess. Party understands that panicking is po is pointless. Assessing the situation and formulating a plan of action is much more useful. 
when they stop struggling, they notice that the quicksand seems to loosen its grips and turn. Before they can hear strange sounds like grinding metal, could there be a mechanism drawing the quicksand downward? The, the exit from the cave is still too high up, and now the party have only one route out. Down. Dive down. The Quagmire's resistance vanishes as expected. The commander opens her eyes, sensing that she is in free fall. Through the gloom, she sees a spear sticking out parallel to the ground and manages to grab hold of the wood and hang suspended from it. Suddenly, everything ugh, suddenly everything jolts into action. Dozens of daggers, saws, swords, and spears spring out from all sides, whistling through the air. But there is no enemy ambush. The weapons are being brandished by the pistons and loudly scrapping gears of a giant mechanism. The spirit that saved the commander was so rushed in this piston that it's no longer able to move. The party has found itself in the heart of a giant metal flower, growing out of the ashy quagmire covering the floor. The orang. Built by the forges of the abyss, tries to close its petals, crushing, mashing, and cutting its victims to pieces. But years of lying dormant in the darkness have taken their toil. Its articulations moved through a soul-shuddering screech and became and become easily jammed. The mummified bodies of unlucky crusaders can still be seen hanging speared on dust on rusted blades. If the commander wants to avoid their fate, she must. Figure out what makes the un the Aranag Aranag move. Even a magical mechanism is still a. We didn't get a choice to who wrote that. Even a mag a magical mechanism is still a mechanism. From above, the commander has good view of the Anarag's inner workings. Large tooth wheels are set in motion by gift shears. It is it all becomes clear. If the gift shafts can be jammed, uh, gear shift, <laughs> shafts. If the gift shafts can be jammed, the movement would stop. The commander is almost out of time. Another few minutes and it will be all over. Realizing that a simple escape is impossible, the commander decides to try jamming the interact's main mechanism into the heart of the flower. She looks around for something sturdy and finds hammer stuff power shield. Oh, dead monk, dead paladin, dead warrior. Our shield. The commander's almost out of time. Oh wait, as she died, the female warrior tried to hide behind the tower shield, but it did not save her. The closing petals bent her to their shield. For forevermore, fusing them together as one whole. The commander plants her feet against the shield and pushes, trying to dislodge it, but it doesn't move an inch. Let's try the staff. Seriously? The body of the monk with the staff on his back looks utterly serene. This person knew what was coming and prepared for death. The Irenaic's daggers pierced him from all sides, but in doing so, they held him fast. His enchanted iron staff is untouched by rust, which is, promising, which is a promising sign. The commander tries to reach the staff, but to do this, she must grab onto the, the monk's shoulders and hang from them. It is a risky maneuver, but the ancient mummy remains intact. Even to the touch, the monk's body is flexible and supple. Like he is only recently dead, the commander seizes the staff and tosses it into the heart of the urinac. The staff falls, striking perfectly in the vulnerable spot where the gear closed together. With the furious screeching and scrapping, the urinacs try to grind up the staff, and after a moment, the staff breaks, disappearing into the bottom of the mechanism. Hammer. The body of the dead paladin. Clutching a war hammer in his hands of bones hangs from one of the Uranax hammer pointing directly upward. The commander is lucky that this warrior chose to meet his death with weapon in hand. The commander drags the body down the body toward her and grabs the hammer. But the servant of light's grip is still surprisingly strong and refuses to relinquish the weapon. The bone arms are easily ripped from the skeleton's shoulders, still holding the hammer. The commander tosses the light into the heart of the Uranag. The hammer falls, sparking up the gears and getting stuck between them. The furious screeching and, scrap and scrapping. The Uranag tries to grind up the hammer, but it cannot. A tremor trails up to the pedals. There is a travels up the pedals. 
There is a deafening cracking sound and the aranag steals forever. After carefully extracting themselves from the clutches of the broken aranag, the commander and her party finds themselves up to their knees and actually sludge it once more, but this time it only harmlessly squelches under the feet of their under their feet as they walk. A dark breach yawns before them and the cry of the commander heard at the and the cry of the commander heard at the entrance of the barrel rises up again. Help me. Since there is no one no other route, the commander decides to just pray for him. The commander offers up a prayer thanking the crusaders who helped their fellow soldiers even in, even in death and asking for forgiveness for not treating their bodies with the respect they deserve. She feels warm to suffuse her like the dead truly are with her and are wishing the party good luck on the onward journey. After all, it, after all its ordeals, the, the party finally goes up the surface and emerges in a small chamber. Pipes protrude from the numerous openings dotted all over the walls and they connect to a small box adorned with Baphomet's symbol. The box cries out, producing high, plaintive no noises that, when carried through the pipes, begin to sound something like, Help me! The commander knows that this is just another demonic mechanism created to lure crusaders into the barrel. She smashes the box, scattering small bolts and gears across the room. Silence reigns. There is no secrets left in this place now. How freaking cool! freaking cool we did all of this nothing we can do there I don't think we can do Heart of Mystery until we beat this fort and where's the Oh yeah, you were going to the clan. Uh, do, 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 do. Wait, where are you? Marksman, mounted. No, you were not. Save. That was a lot of reading. We get, I think we didn't really use this oh, crap. This is five days. Um, let's see. Let's just see. I think it's just, oh, it is just now, but oh boy, do they have, oh you have that Bluetooth, oh Bluetooth thing, hold, You just need them him down a little at this point. I feel like we're gonna lose a lot of them. Oh, seven, not bad. Oh, what is this? Oh, crap. What's this? 
the Rangers, let's thank you held for another round, so let's heal. Doesn't make sense to heal them though. Um we do this. Run a nine. Right now, we can lose them. Now we're most likely going to lose them, so. Four, not bad. You can can't even reach that one. Eight. Come on. Oh, look at that. Six to seven. Please be able to finish them off. Thank you. Yes. Perfect. All right, now he'll been all we had oh yeah, there's a lot of rangers in this one not bad thirteen let's see what he does There we go. I'll take it. One hundred percent. We'll take it. Let's do this to be safe. Hold. There we go. We really didn't need it. Because after everyone has a turn, by the time it gets to the Hell Knights, even if it was like five, they would have been able to take them out. Where, where dwarves would mine, priceless crystals are now abandoned. The group of demons that had made a slayer there tried to defend their territory from the crusaders, but to no effect. What is this? Oh, black water. Yep, yep. Oh, that's. See. Oh, that doesn't look good at all. Let's try to get. I can't believe there's no way for us to get um part of the mystery. Just want to be clear. There's no other way for us to go this way. 
We have to go back to the labyrinth, but we got the same the ivory sanctum. I look this up every time, but it is not timed. So we can just do whatever. So right now Let's go to Dresden. I do want to go to Dresden home at one point. Hey. We have a lot to do. A lot to do. Enter. First, let's do the prison. Did we catch? I don't remember we had a level outside of that. Where is he? Graham. Well, did you talk to the interpreters? The interpreters. Exterpret. Exterpret. That was right. They're all dead. That's a shame. That's a shame. I think I'm welling up. It was a trap. You were hoping the monster would kill us. Would kill us too. Accusations again. You can say whatever you like, but where's the proof? You can't scare me. Listen. Do you understand the situation you've gotten yourself into? You'll be wise not to antagonize us. You should help us and hope that after everything you've done, we still have a little mercy for you. <laughs> mercy? I'll be a fool to believe that lie. I know how kind you and your brother are. My whole back is covered with scars because of his mercy. That's not true. So Social mother silent. It can't be true. Tell me what really happened. Or what? Mm, no, I don't. <laughs> True enough, imposter could false. True enough, could not. Commander, you crack me up. All right, I got nothing to do. Your bars are strong, locks are good. <laughs> you got me. I hope for your. Mm -hmm. The imposter casts a vicious look at Socio. Your mercy. <laughs> well, listen, this time I'll tell you how it was. I was a soldier fighting for the interpreters. That wasn't a lie. I was I was valet for that scumbag Trevor. He used to work me hard, but that was a long time ago before the demons took him. Took him? How? Where? How would you even say such a thing? Socio voice is choked with grief and rage. The imposter enjoys the look on Socio's face. Keep listening. Don't interrupt me. We were hunting a Chimera back there back then. It's an easy job for an exterpreter. For the exterp I feel like I'm saying this wrong. Exterpreters. Even with all the demonic freakishness, 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 the wound gives a chimera. We were driving it towards your boy Trevor. He was preparing to attack. And then a demon appears. A huge one. Scary in a black mask. Bam. We was one night for the pieces. Bam. Then another one. Then go, there goes another one. And then the demon lord looks at Trevor and says... This one is good. I'll take him. And he picks him up like he weighed nothing and vanished. Well, what could we do? <laughs> the demon was chopping up knights left and right and center. What could we do? We turned and ran. And the rest of our guys came up to us. They executed a few of us on the spot as a warning and made the other slaves. Life bait for monsters. Slaves don't live long. Only three of us survived out of the whole unit. And no one has seen Trevor since. 
there, there used to be a female knight among the Estorpidus called Marenta. How did she get Trevor's shield? Marenta? <laughs> she and Trevor were sleeping together. When they dragged Trevor off, he dropped his shield so she picked it up. Like, to remember him. I'm telling you, those two deserved each other. When Trevor was gone, that crazy bitch wanted all of us to be executed. The whole unit. The paralytic refuses to waste people. He said we will be used for his slaves. She made a scene and then transferred to another order. <laughs> Good riddance. Ooh. What kind of person was he? A real devil. Didn't go didn't go on easy with anyone. He beat us good. The knights respected him, and us ordinary infantry were afraid to show him our afraid to show our faces to him. What happened to the interpreters? You saw what happened to them. They died. I don't care. I'm not going to cry about them. They killed a lot of beasts, but there's always someone stronger. The demons wiped them out. Only the ones who ran survived. We know where. He doesn't know. Are you deaf? I told you no one knows. A demon dragged him off. A demon with a black mask. As to where and why, you have to ask the demons. You said three of you survived. Where are the other two? I think they're going to Canabras. They wanted to pretend to be refugees and then wing it. Do you want to catch them too? They're probably somewhere near the creepy church where the undead used to be. I heard they're planning to build a shelter there to stay away from the local commander. Sosa, have you heard enough? Yes. Sosa's voice sounds hollow and he looks totally lost. I... I have. So it's true. My brother betrayed everything we believed in. We believed in. Ooh. For him to... <sighs> Technically, he is a liar, but I also believe what he's saying about Trevor. And I'm not calling Trevor a hero. And maybe he was, but that doesn't give him the right. But... Technically, this is one person's side of the story, and the liar's at that. Let's find the other two survivors and ask them. What's the point of running away from the truth? The others will only confirm his words. Socio looks down, but then hesitantly looks up at you. Although, it probably wouldn't hurt. Excuse me, I need some fresh air. Can we talk to him again? Oh, you again. We may, mm, we can let him go later. I don't want to let him go now. Socio's already not feeling a. <laughs> he had a lot of stuff going on. I feel like if we let him go, he'll be like, what are you doing? Type thing. So Abu was with us with in that, but not when we was, when the Scamelia story happened. Granted, we still were able to kill her, but still. can select answers we know that poor socio i don't know how bad I, I feel for him but i don't know how I, right now we don't have a positive picture on his brother like he sounds like a douchebag 